We get at least a dozen messages a day of people telling us to kill ourselves because of this is what how we're treating our, our you know how we're raising our children and so it's helped me to learn to be mentally strong but also to remember this is the word that God gave me that I have to move on whether you agree with it or not yeah um, but then also like I don't shame other parents because they don't do this because no. I'll say if you're not if you have not done this for yourself do not try to do it for your That's children because right. you're just gonna embarrass yourself when they see you drinking Dr Pepper but they gotta drink water like it's just not fair right so I think leading by example like I as a parent. I see myself as a curator for my children. So you are, I'm never gonna force food down their throats, but these are the foods that we're gonna have available in our house. You can either eat them or you don't. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, that way every single time we talk to Abby from House of Keto, you'll be alerted yeah, to it. Yeah, if you want to see recipes, <laughs> yes. you need to go check out Abby on Instagram. So we're so excited because you weren't even on the schedule to be here. No. How did we get so blessed? What happened? What happened that you got here? Um, I think I was possibly going somewhere else and then I had like, I thought I was gonna come and then I was like, hey, I'm gonna be there. So then she's like, wanna do Q&A? And I was like, absolutely, sure. I, I am so <laughs> happy to see her because, by the, so again, this is Abby. You're on Instagram. Do you have a YouTube? Um, we have a YouTube. I just, I, I, you guys are inspiring me to do more on our YouTube, but okay. I do have a YouTube and I usually just take the stuff that we're already putting other places. Well, we'll help you with YouTube. YouTube if you can teach us how to do Instagram. Yes. Because we have Instagram. no clue how to do Are you guys on TikTok? No. no. Okay, so TikTok is no, like we're fifty. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was an age, age limit, I think, on that. I think you guys would be great on TikTok. So our yeah. largest platform is TikTok, but we're also on. Our son Instagram. loves TikTok. He lives yeah. on it. TikTok? But he's twenty-one. Yeah. So there's a bunch of fourteen-year-olds on TikTok. It's a little scary sometimes. Okay. But <laughs> we do really well on TikTok. So. so, but you do a lot of live on Instagram. Yeah, we go live on Instagram. Gosh, at least three nights a week, cooking dinner, and it's like real time. So I don't prepare anything ahead of time. Like I'm not a chef. I say all the time. My claim to fame is I used to be a size 20, 260 pounds and I like to eat. So you are watching us cook dinner that night for my family. You were talking about cooking live because that would freak me out. <laughs> and I was thinking last night, I'm like, how do I break it to Rachel that we should start doing live cooking shows? <laughs> because you're thinking that, and I think this is something that you always struggle with when you're sharing your life. Yep. I wanted everybody to see it perfect. No, see, that's the complete opposite of me. I'm like, I, I give a disclaimer every time. I'm like, I'm not a professional chef. I'm probably chopping this wrong. I'm literally cooking to eat, that's it. So um, we show all of it. Like a couple times, it was like twice last week, I got hit with bad meat. I like opened the sausage and they were like bad. And so I'm like, let's look in the fridge and see what, what else is find. for dinner. You know? And so I think it shows people, because that's like real life. Well, and because most people aren't a chef. Most yeah. people are just cooking for their family. Right, they're cooking to eat. And so I'm like, when I watch cooking shows, a lot of times, like the ones that are on like networks, they're not, I mean, they're boring. I'm like, burn something, slice something open, like bleed a little bit. So yeah. I burned my finger in the air fryer last week. Um, I'm crying on live and people are like, put wow. butter on it, put salt on it. Um, and I feel like people can just relate to that more because I, I that's really that. what's happening um, in your kitchen. So we're going through my fridge. We're trying to find something else to make, another protein. I showed them some of my hacks, like some of the frozen stuff that we keep that's meat that we can still use. So I'm like, hey, this is what I always keep just in case something like this happens. This is what I keep for this. And so I feel like it just helps people to say like, hey, this is something it. that I can do. And then obviously oh, yeah. our lives, they're pretty quick. I mean, I can do anything from a five minute meal to 30 minutes, but we're doing it all right there. And wow. I'm like, it's gotta be quick, it's gotta be simple, and it's gotta be keto. And it's not super, super complicated. Well, you have an awesome story, but before we ask you about that, which is the main reason I wanted to have you come over here, can you tell us how did you find keto and like your journey in keto before we get to your kids? Yeah, so um, I have feel like I've been overweight my entire life, like always on a diet, but still always overweight. Um, and I guess about five, six years ago, it probably got to the worst it ever was. Um, I had just had my son and I was 260 pounds, a size 20. Um, and I'm just barely 5'2", so that's a lot for my short size. 
um, and it was just, it was a lot. I felt really depressed. Um, my anxiety was really bad. Um, and I kind of felt like I always dealt with that, but I didn't really start to look at it until I had my son and it was like, okay, more people are talking about postpartum depression than are talking about just regular depression. So it was like, kind of like this wave, like the moms were like, okay, let's just admit we can't do this all on our own. Let's right. just say we have like, we're dealing with postpartum depression. And so I was like, okay, it's easier for me to say that because it's like, I was fine until this baby. And so I was like, I'll, um, it's easier for me to say that, but then I had to kind of look at it and say, no, this is actually something I've been feeling for a really long time. Um, like I have a lot of childhood trauma and just stuff that I went through as a child and I never really got to process it. Um, and when I look back on it, I can see that from the time of eight, nine years old, it was me and food. Like that's what I had. That was the relation. I developed this relationship with food that was extremely unhealthy. But whenever I was sad, angry, or upset, the first thing I would do was reach for food. Um, and so that's what I was doing. You know, and I was struggling with postpartum depression with my son. And um, honestly, for me, like I grew up in church, and I've always had a relationship with God. But it was kind of like. I didn't really want to see God as a father. I wanted to see him just as like the sovereign king that I was just so unworthy to approach. And um, he was just like, well, look at this peasant girl. She can never get it right. Um, and you know, my dad and I, we didn't really have like a horrible relationship, but it just, it wasn't what I think any little girl would want with So when dad. you're trying to picture a heavenly father, when your earthly father makes mistakes, I yeah. mean, you know, they're fallible, they're yeah. human beings, you know, then yeah, it's it was hard, really to, hard to try to trust him as a father. Yeah, so I was like, I don't want you to be God the Father, I want you to just be God. Um, and so I'm literally in this moment in my closet, my anxiety and depression was at the worst it had ever been. Um, I was sitting in my closet and I was ready to take my own life. And because I'm a mom, I was still thinking of others first. I'm like, do I take my life before my daughter goes to school or after? Right. Like, should she get picked up? Should I make something for dinner? And I'm literally sitting in my closet and I felt God say to me, what is your name? And I'm like, why would you ask me that? My name is Abigail and it means father's joy. And I'm like, clearly I'm not my father's joy. Um, and so I was just like really upset in that moment. Like, come on, all knowing, like just kill me already then if that's what you want. Um, and so I just kept hearing God say, what is your name? And so I was like, God, I'm not. And he said, no, you are in your mind. Wow. Um, and it was in that moment, like that was enough for me to come out of the closet that day. Um, and so I didn't take my own life, but it wasn't like things just changed in that moment. I had, right. there was this level of curiosity, like, God, why do you think that I'm your joy? And so I felt like for a few months, I just kind of chased that question, just asking like, why? Why don't you think that I'm dirty and disgusting? Why don't you think that I'm an embarrassment? Like, why don't you think that I'm all of these things that I believed about myself? Um, and so from that, I, you know, I wasn't really going to church at that time, but I started just like listening to worship music and listening to these songs. And it almost felt like they were just like washing all of these thoughts off of me. And from that came this desire to just treat me better. And it was like, I almost started to feel like whenever I would have these negative thoughts about myself, I had this feeling like, that's my girl, don't talk about her. Oh, I love and that. So I started, it was like, okay, you know, I had to kind of like check myself. And so I started to want to take care of myself. So I started, of course, you know, a, a low calorie, you know, mm -hmm. diet, brown rice and sweet potato and all that stuff but it just wasn't working. And I would do well throughout the week and then the weekend would come and I would just feel like it would all come undone. Yeah. Like I was trying to trick myself all week, like you're a child of God and he loves you and you can do this. And then the weekend would come and it'd be like, no, actually you suck. Like my cheat meal would turn into a cheat weekend and I was back to believing all of those lies. And I was really, everything that I would lose throughout the week, I would regain on the weekend. Cause I was just sitting in bed eating pizzas. I was eating four large Papa John's pizzas in a weekend. One on Friday night, two on Saturday, and one on Sunday. Well, because, and, and that's important to, to share because everybody can't have a cheat meal and, and it not do something to you. Because we are, for some of us, and I'm, I'm that type of person too, there is an emotional connection. There is, you know, who, how I feel about myself is connected to to what I'm eating yeah and and the label for myself sticks so when I'm like this is a cheat meal I've become a cheater yeah. and now I think of myself is like well if you're just you know a cheater and 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 dirty like you might as well just like there's no reason yeah. to like you know try to save this weekend and you just go until Monday morning and start over loser you yeah. know like that's how I felt about myself too and that's yeah. one of the things that we t constantly tell people and I don't know how you feel about it. You see all of these terms, and we, we said it yesterday when, during our talk, like first of all, we are a community of the proper human diet, whether you're keto or you're carnivore, yeah. or you're ketovore, and I'm, I'm so tired of seeing this split. I'm, I'm better than you because I'm stricter than yeah. you, and, and we're all trying to just improve our health, but 
what you see is these terms of you're doing dirty keto or you're doing lazy keto yeah. or you're having a cheat meal and what you're doing is you're labeling yourself that yeah. then you're gonna wake up and like you're a dirty person yeah 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 you're not doing it right and that's so great that you're saying that what's really happening in our community and it's like no we're actually supposed to be coming together over this not separating that's people. right and so myself or the way that we frame it is I back then I used the term cheat day now I do not if I'm if it's birthday holiday weekend or not weekend but birthday holiday vacation or like a special occasion then it is something that I'm planning and so mm -hmm. I mount mentally for myself I do so much better when I say hey I know my birthday comes every year yep. on this date yeah so I already know that I'm gonna have cake so if that day comes and I have cake I haven't gone off of my plan. This is my plan to have cake, and I'm going back on right after. And so I think for me mentally, I still feel powerful, yep. I still feel in control, and I still feel successful because the cheat day, it's like you start doing it and you're like, oh my God, I remember all of these foods and how they feel, and we really haven't set ourselves up for after it. You know, you say cheat day, which day? Right, and it then the be cheat all the day days. becomes a cheat week, becomes yeah. a cheat month, becomes a cheat year, and then the next thing you yeah. know, you never go and back. You never go back. So for me, it's like I'm planning ahead of time. Like I'm already, my birthday's in February. I've already know what I'm doing for my birthday. Like I keep a notepad in my on my iPhone, so I know. And I nor normally never get to any of that stuff, but it's like, hey, I don't need to have it today. I'm gonna plan for it. And I kind of look at it the same way that I look at yeah. vacation. Like if you work a job, like you can't just disappear and say I'm going on vacation and come back and expect to still have your job. But you plan for that. You say, hey, I'm gonna go away. You make sure your work is done prior. You know what you're getting into when you come back. You make sure people know that you're going off and there's that accountability of the community to say, hey, we know today's Abby's birthday. Like, here's what she's gonna do. And people are actually celebrating you. Like, girl, eat that cake today. Well, and you a know? birthday meal, that's, that's, that'll bless your heart. Yeah. Right. A vacation meal, if we're calling it, it's a vacation meal. Yeah. That is something that, that, that is already compartmentalized. Yeah. It already is within the confines of your vacation or your birthday meal or your anniversary yeah. meal. And so we, and now it's something to celebrate, not something to feel guilty about, yeah. not something to dread the yeah. recovery from. Because you almost even feel bad when you say cheat day, you feel bad for needing it. And when I think cheat mm -hmm. day, I think about cheat codes. Like it should get me further, but it doesn't. It ends right. up derailing me because now it's not even what it does to the body. It's really what's happening to me mentally because I had this cheat day, but now all of a sudden I feel like a complete failure yeah. Yeah. and something is not lining up and something in that gets lost. And it's like, let's just throw it all out because why, why do I need a cheat day? You feel bad for even needing it because then there's people like, oh, I don't never, I never have a cheat day. It's like, I'll never get to that point. So you started keto. And yeah. you started feeling better? Yeah, I did. I started keto. I was working out with a trainer and he, you know, gave me this regular old diet plan and it just wasn't working. He mentioned keto and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to gain so much weight. Yeah. Mind you, I had been gaining and losing the same four pounds for like six months. And so I was homeschooled. So I started researching like crazy. I'm like, I cannot die from this. And literally that's the reason I researched for six weeks. I barely slept. All I did was research keto, not that's to help anybody <laughs> else, literally just to be able to help myself. And so um, I finally started it. And and when I tell you the first week and a half, like I felt absolutely amazing. I felt like a completely different person. And how long ago is this? Um, this was five years ago. Five years. Five years ago. And that first week, like, I mean, I prepped everything. I made a bacon cheeseburger bowl. I packaged them up, like meal prepped. And I weighed out the cheese and I had berries and the almonds and every, like everything was weighed out. And I was like, I'm not, there's no way that I can fail with this because I felt like for me, failure on keto is I would die. So I was like, right. there's no way that I can um, mess this up. But I hadn't had, you know, full fat cheese or bacon or sausage in my house in forever. Even though I was still overweight, I was always on a diet. So it was like, I wouldn't buy those things until I'm like, Send my husband, I'm like, I want to have this today. And I'd send him to the grocery store to go buy all the cookies and ice cream. So like, it wasn't really part of my regular grocery shopping thing because I tried to convince myself. When I was in the grocery store, I don't know who I thought I was. You know, I'm buying all the yeah. veggies and stuff. And then I get home and I'm like, I'm not this person. Bring on the right. snacks. And well, I make, make husband, your husband, husband do it. Thing. Like yeah. on the way home when nobody, I know you were talking about it yesterday. When on your way home and nobody knows, Yeah. you know, and you can go hide in the closet or hide in the bathroom yeah. or hide in the truck. I should have just yeah. put a deep freeze in my car. It would have like made things so much easier so much easier yeah but I would just want to sit and eat by myself and that, so that's kind of what I did and that started for me in childhood um, you know like I would kind of be left home a lot and so it was like when I was there by myself and I was feeling sad lonely or depressed what would I do I would try to eat as much food as fast as I could I'm one of eight kids so like you had to get up super early if you wanted to get the good cereal and the good spoon so right. it was like I kind of learned to do that and so I noticed in adulthood I was really doing the same thing I was eating by myself I was hiding in my car to eat I didn't want like if you saw me you'd be like Something's not adding up, you know, right? You're like, oh, you want something? Oh, no, I'm not hungry. 
It's like, girl, it's like, how? You know, so how much I weight did you lost? I lost 130 pounds, over 145 inches. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So. And was your husband tough to convince? He wasn't actually. So it actually started as a fight because I make these uh, buffalo chicken burgers. They're so amazing. And so I'm making these buffalo chicken burgers and I like making them, I'm cooking them, sitting them on a plate, and like every time I turn around, they're gone. I'm like, what is going on? The man's eating my food. Wow. And I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, you're not, you cannot eat this and eat donuts. And really, it was because I was pissed that he was eating the donuts. Right. So I was like, if you want to eat this, you have to give up the donuts. And I thought there's no way that he would say yes. And he's like, fine, I'll do it. He's like, I'll give up, you know, the bread. I was like, you sure? Because this is my food that you're eating. Like, I make enough for me and some for tomorrow, but now I have none for tomorrow because you've eaten it and you also had your croissant. That was kind of like that. So when we got started, she was like, I was doing keto, and she's like, I'm going back to oatmeal because keto doesn't work. And she's like, this isn't fair. Look at <laughs> I was just eating. Legit angry <laughs> yeah. that like he was getting something I wasn't eating. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you have to, I, I think that really helps to just try for your for your marriage. I mean, give it a try. Like right. if you have a spouse that's on keto and we hear that a lot where it's like, man, I'm doing it by myself and my, my husband or wife or partner will not, you know, do this with me. Yeah. Like give it a try for your relationship. If no other reason right. yeah. than to <laughs> shut them up, like give it a try. Yeah. So one of the biggest reasons we want to have you come over here is because we love children. I don't know if you know, but you know, we do children's ministry yeah, in our church. So cool. And you know, we do all the curriculum for our church and we just love looking out for the kids. And in fact, we had a whole month of just helping parents prepare for kids going back to school. Oh, wow. And you know, we had talked to Maria Maria Emmer, I don't know if you've seen her new book yet. It, I don't even want, I don't, my youngest kid is 20. I just want to eat everything in the, in the book. We bought so it for fun. ourselves. But you have a special story with your kids that touched yeah. my heart. Because, and I wanted you to share it. Because a lot of times it's, it's like, it's fine for us as, as adults to talk about keto and this is how we eat. And as soon as it brings up that like, oh, and we're making this for their kids. It's like, don't, yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't feed this to your kids. <laughs> Stop but right it's okay there. to feed our kids dino nuggets and, and french Mac. fries yeah. and easy mac and yeah. bags of skin. That's fine. Yeah. But, but let's not so what salmon. Was your, and what was your mom journey on keto? Yeah. So um, I have two kids, Huxley and Penelope. Huxley will be six next month and Penelope will be 12. And so about three years ago, I had already been keto for about two years. I'm one of eight kids. I've been a nanny for a long time. And so Huxley was about a little over one. And my husband and I had just been noticing some behaviors from him that were just a little bit odd. They weren't normal. Um, and we both kind of knew. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, because I had struggled with postpartum depression, I kind of didn't even want to talk about it. It was like we literally never spoke about it. I was just like, I made him another appointment for the pediatrician. He would never ask why, like, is he sick? It was just like he knew why I was, I kept going to the pediatrician. And um, he was pretty much nonverbal. He was angry all the time. I mean, the kid was upset like he worked three jobs. And I'm just like, I don't understand this. Like, you right. live rent free in this house. Um, when someone would speak to him, he would just like grunt and would get extremely angry. He would destroy stuff. Like, we literally, as a family, we could not go in public because of him. Um, and like, I've dealt with like, you know, a bad kid before. He wasn't, it wasn't just like, oh, this kid's bad and like, he doesn't want to listen. It was like he was seriously dealing with something. And as a mom, I felt like a failure. And so we kept taking him to the pediatrician. She's like, well, you know, I don't know, you know, what's going on, but you know, he looked like he was doing fine on all of the growth charts. He was growing. So she's like, just keep feeding him whatever he's eating. At the time, he was eating like Tootsie Rolls, whipped cream, syrup, Dr. Pepper. He hadn't had like a real piece of meat in like a, a really long time. But it was like, let him just. Yeah, pick they what were, he yeah, wants. let him, if he wants to eat it, goldfish and syrup. And so me trying to be a good mom, I switched him to sugar-free syrup and whole grain goldfish. And literally like the syrup was on top of like pancakes or waffles. He wouldn't even eat the waffles or pancakes. He would just use a spoon to drink up the syrup. And so I'm just like, this is just, it was really making me feel like I was not doing something right as a mom. And so um, I watched the movie Magic Pill. And um, the little girl, Abby, on the movie, her diet was actually better than Huxley's diet. Wow. So I'm watching this, and of course, we have the same name, so I'm like, this is strange. And I'm going through this, and as I'm watching the movie, I start crying, and I'm like, why am I crying? And I felt God say to me, this is what you're going to do for your son, and you're going to change his life. And I was just wow. like, I literally just started bawling. My daughter, like the whole family's watching, everyone's looking at me. 
and I'm not crying because I'm like, oh God, I'm getting ready to change my son's life. I'm crying because I'm like, this is literally getting ready to be the hardest thing that I've ever done. Because you're seeing in that movie that this isn't like the, the kid is automatically on board yeah. with this. And right. it's not happy. <laughs> and that is really across the board. If, if you're thinking you're going to transition any child yeah. from, from eating a, a high sugar diet to, to, to not, yeah. it's, it, you're not guaranteed it's going to be fun. It's not fun for no, us as adults. It's not fun for us as adults, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't easy, but I knew, I think for me, the most important thing was I'm going to be obedient to what God is telling me. And yeah. this is what he's telling our family. So I feel like that really helped me to be able to go forward because it was like, no matter what he's telling this family, the Joneses, the Smiths or whatever, this is what he told me to do for my children. Um, they are my first responsibility. And we were already helping other people. Um, and so it was like, how are you going to help other people? But this is your first right. ministry, your family. Um, and you that's what you have to do. So I was like, all right, we, we're getting ready to move. And when we went to go move, I was like, we're just not going to take any of this stuff with us. So I didn't make an announcement. The whole family's going keto. I just stopped buying stuff. So when it was like, where's the goldfish? I don't know. Right. Um, are there? Did you get any juice? Oh, no, I must have forgot. And then when we moved into our new home, we just... When we packed up, we didn't bring any of that stuff with us. It was a truly um, fresh start. Literally, it was a truly fresh start, and that's really where we got the name House of Keto. I wanted a space that was safe for my children to be in, where there was no food that was off limits. Um, and so really, the only thing that we do in our house is we have a saying, meats before treats. So as long as you've had meat today, um, I don't care when you have it, but as long as you have meat, meat first, then you can have any treats that you want. Love that. Um, and yeah, so I mean, we have our entire, we have two pantries, we have like three refrigerators, six freezers, because of all the recipe testing and stuff that we do. But literally, you will not find anything in our house that it's not keto friendly and so that first transition for him those first two days it was like around Father's Day weekend it was difficult at the time he was actually still drinking like full fat milk from a bottle I had no intention to wean him because his behavior would get out of hand if he did not have the bottle um, and so sometimes we would use heavy cream in his bottle to try to like thicken it up because the kid would go through like five gallons of milk a day right. and so he's got like six different bottles with like different combinations of heavy cream and water just heavy cream almond milk and all of this so for two days he walked around basically sipping on these bottles. I think he put an almond in his mouth at one point and he was drinking water and my husband's like, babe, I don't know about this. Yeah. He's like, he goes to change his diaper. He's like, oh, he looks real skinny to me. I'm like, babe, it's been 12 hours. I'm like, right. We keep, I kept making him But it's him scary. Food. This is your child. It really and is. And it's, you know, people think about it and like, but what would you do? Hear about what are you, I, I used to listen on an airplane and they say, you know, if the oxygen mask comes down, put it on you first and then, and your, then child. your child. And my thought is always like, no, 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 they're more important. Yeah, but no. Right? I, but you can't help them if you put it right. on them first. And so that's really what we see. We get a lot of backlash. Like we've had uh, prote Child Protective Services con contacted on us. We've had our TikTok account shut down for child abuse and child endangerment because of the way that we feed because our children. Feeding them meat. Yeah, we're feeding them meat. Um, because it would be better to give them syrup and goldfish yeah. crackers. That would and be Dr. Pepper. <laughs> more socially acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. than to, to do that, what you're yeah. doing. And so we, I know, you know, I don't, in the beginning, I think it, it did really affect me. I mean, we still to this day, we have people that will send us messages. We get at least a dozen messages a day of people telling us to kill ourselves because of this is what how we're treating our, our you know, how we're raising our children. And so it's helped me to learn to be mentally strong, but also to remember this is a word that God gave me that I have to move on, whether you agree with it or not. Yeah. Um, but then also, like, I don't shame other parents because they don't do this. Because no. Because I'll say, if you're not, if you have not done this for yourself, do not try to do it for your That's children. Because right. you're just going to embarrass yourself when they see you drinking Dr. Pepper, but they got to drink water. Like, it's just not fair. Right. So I I think leading by example like I as a parent I see myself as a curator for my children so you're I'm never gonna force food down their throats but these are the foods that we're gonna have available in our house you can either eat them or you don't if you get hungry enough you will eat them yeah you know and my thing was to my husband like I'm not gonna put on pants so I can go buy goldfish I've got a plate you know I would make him six, seven different plates a day. It would be steak, it would be tomatoes, some cheese, there would be pork, there would be chicken. And just every time he was acting like he wanted to eat, I would make him this plate and I would offer it to him. So Child Protective Services, I mean, he's got shrimp, he's got lobster, he's got right. steak, you know. Right. What is horrible about this? And he would decide not to eat it. And it was finally on day two and a half, he started poking stuff and he picked up something and started licking it and he started eating. And it was like, it was so emotional. What wow. was that? Ah, God, I feel like the first thing he picked up was a piece of cheese. I think it had like sauce. I made him this, um, we actually, yeah, we call it a uh, pizza. Well, he called it pizza because remember his speech was not really great at that time. So he couldn't say pizza, but it was, I made a um, crust. We used slices of mozzarella cheese 
and um, we bake them like on broil so they'll get a little crispy and then we build a pizza on top of it. Nice. Okay, like why aren't we doing that? I was going to say, I feel like that would be the first thing of that Joe would Of course I can't do it for the next 25 days because I'm only allowed to eat beef, yeah, bacon, butter, and But what's crazy now is that he, so that's what he lived on for probably like the first maybe two months. Now he does not eat cheese at what all. What does he eat now? He eats uh, ribeye, salmon, burgers. Um, he doesn't really like chicken that much. Pretty much red meat and salmon. So he's a carnivore. He's carnivore. So other than that, the only other thing that he'll eat is uh, Simple Mills almond flour crackers. That's the only other thing um, that he'll eat. But like, he would not try. He would not eat fruit. Like he didn't. He didn't really eat any of that stuff before. And so we don't. I don't push that on him to force him um, to eat that. But I mean, he's thriving. When I tell you, there are days. Yeah. What where, changes did you see? Geez. So literally, his demeanor. He's one of the sweetest kids you will ever meet, um, and he never stops talking. Like, there's wow. literally days- he went from non-verbal to- Went to non-verbal to there are literally days where I say, Huxley, can mommy have just two minutes to think about whatever she wants to think How about? How long was the transition? Um, honestly, so after like the first two weeks, we started to hear him start to try to verbalize things. So that's where like the pizza came from, and it was like, we made out, when he first started saying it, we couldn't really understand what he was saying, but it was, it was like, it was immediate. And so those first three, those probably that first week, his energy was like really low, obviously because like the electrolyte imbalance and all of yeah. that stuff. And so we were trying to get that in him, but I was like, I know this is what we have to do to eventually get to this point. Um, and I mean, you when you take a kid who's literally, I remember I went off on a waitress for, I ordered him a Dr. Pepper and she added water to it. And I went off, I said, don't you take the sugar out of my kid's drink. I'm like, wow. I'm the parent. And right. here I am now switching my kid and he doesn't even drink juice like he'll drink water and he'll drink Ultima Replenisher and that's it and I mean just the the difference that we've seen in him has been absolutely amazing and when I tell you like I believe that it was obviously the change in his diet but also I prayed every single day for this little boy like I in my prayer journal I still have it the top of my prayer list was for Huxley to eat ribeye and for Huxley to start yeah talking. you said that last night and that was the actual thing that you saw happen literally you got specific literally and I, I got so specific and I've learned like I've learned so much, um, I don't wanna get emotional. I've learned so much um, from being a parent, mm -hmm. especially being a parent to this little boy um, who was struggling and he was miserable and I felt absolutely horrible from it. Yeah. And it's just amazing how I was able to see God literally take it and work it out for my good. Not only is he verbal, he never stops talking. Yeah. Not only is he not abundantly sugar, above, above all, all that, that I can ask. And it's just like, uh, when I see him now, I look at him and I'm like, he's going to change the world through his speech. I know Absolutely. it. Um, and so I just, I'm so, I look at my kids as a gift from God. There's something that God gave to me for me to properly steward. Yeah. And, you know, I, I tr look back and like, man, I messed up so much and I wish that this never happened and I wish that I was able to connect with him better. But I can look back over and I can see God's hand in every part of our story um, and even how we're able to use it to share it with other people. We have, you know, he was, he had a referral to be tested for autism. And I never took him. I was like, I, I was sitting there on that couch and God spoke to me and he said, this is how you're going to change your son's life. Wow. And so it doesn't matter, you know, if we were to take him today, if they were to diagnose, it doesn't matter. Um, his life and his world has been changed. And, you know, and it, there's nothing against anyone that has that diagnosis, but this is what I felt like I was called to for do you. for myself, um, for my children. And, you know, he hasn't had to be on any medications. We haven't needed any other interventions. And that is okay if yeah. we're doing things differently as parents than every other house on our block. Yeah. Like that is okay. That that is the privilege of being the parent of these precious children. Yeah. I mean that's that's and that's our job is to say even if other people do it differently, that we're yeah. gonna not do it the yeah. same way. And it's 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 only what's like I'm not concerned about like obviously I want to see other children thrive and I can see children and say like I think that their behavior would be so much better if they're off of sugar, but I don't judge other parents that no. don't know because I knew I'd been keto for two years. I had already had all of this information and knowledge. And so, you know, I'm like questioning God, well, what about this? And it's like, you already know all of these things. Right. So I look back and I'm like, if I had to go through what I, even if I went through what I went through as a child to push me to a food addiction so that I'm in this traumatic situation where I'm using food to cope, then I have this experience with God where I lose all of this weight and I do help other people for two years so that when God spoke to me in that moment, I was able to get up off the couch and do it and do it I'm, I'm so thankful for that and it, for my son there's nothing in this world that is worth more to me than those children um, and so it's like if I can't I'm I look at other parents and it's like I can't ask you to do something for your children that you haven't been willing to do for yourself that's very so, true you know if a parent's like oh well I can't you know I can't do that for my kids I can't take away dino nuggets you haven't taken it away I, from I, yourself I was just yeah. gonna ask you because we're not doctors or health professionals and 
what happened with Huxley may or may not be related to his diet, but it doesn't hurt to try. But I was yeah. gonna ask you, what would you say to the parent? Because we get it from you all the time. Your youngest is 20. You don't understand this is the only thing my child will eat. What do you say to that parent who says they want to help them, but their kids won't eat it? Yeah, so I would say the, the number one thing that we did was we just stopped buying it. And so the thing is, is that if as a curator for my children, if I am giving them the choice of Oreos or salmon, they're going to choose every time, Oreos. especially when they are addicted to sugar. So the number one thing is you have to just stop buying it. You don't need to make an announcement that we are removing sugar. You're a mom. You don't forget things King just like, like me. Says. Yeah, I mean, just, hey, where, where's the Oreos? Oh, I forgot them. Where's the, like, and soon enough, and just start making the food and offering it to them. Like Huxley, when I tell you, he had not had a piece of meat in probably about eight or nine months. Um, and like I remember the last time because it was right before Christmas like he stole a piece of General Toast chicken off my daughter's plate This was before she was keto and so when he finally ate meat It was like did he eat this because I forced him to eat it or did he eat it because I isolated Out all of the other stuff all of the right. other junk and it's like your kids will pick from what you give them So we never force food and to this day. We still do not um, at, What we would do is um, for breakfast. It was three minutes for lunch. It was four or five minutes and dinner was seven minutes that we expected for the whole family to be there. Um, and when we first started, like we have videos on our YouTube, that's really where we started posting videos of Huxley sitting at the dinner table, just screaming and crying, flipping his plate over, trying to fling everybody else's plate. My dinner table looks like he stabbed it because he would just, <laughs> He would be banging. He would be banging toys. So we had a rule. It was like, okay, this is how many minutes. We're not going to have any other distractions. No, I was going to ask no you toys. because before does somebody that says help? that you're only allowing him to eat for three minutes, you mean he had to sit there? No, for he had three. to for three minutes. We were focusing on just I breakfast. I love that. So if I made, you know, eggs, scrambled eggs, avocado, and bacon, I put it on his plate, and for three minutes, my attention was divided to just him. And we're gonna focus on this plate. So even if he threw it, I, as embarrassing as it was, I would get up and gather it all back up knowing that he wasn't necessarily going to eat it but for three minutes we're sitting here at the table with this food and so we went from him throwing it across the table to him banging it him sliding it him trying to take other people's food and mess with it so then he would sit there and he would poke it and then he would take it and he would stick his tongue in it and so every time he did that we just celebrated him yeah. um, but i never i'm like i'm never going to force food down my kids throat because we don't see that in adulthood so my parenting approach is i am raised i am parenting children but i am raising adults that's so right, I'm not right. gonna teach. I'm not gonna teach any lesson now that does not apply in adulthood. So even like with sharing, I'm like, if this is your favorite toy, let's take it upstairs and put it in our room. It doesn't have to be open to everyone in the playroom because I can't go borrow my neighbor's Tesla and tell them it's my turn now. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, how can I parent them now but raise them to be adults? Wow. And so we don't force food. Um, and even to this day, like if they don't want to eat breakfast, because. It doesn't, just because I want you to eat a Pop-Tart before you run out the door so I can feel like a better parent, you're yeah. not hungry. So my kids, usually they don't even eat breakfast. Like we'll ask them if they want to eat breakfast, we make it. If they don't, they know their bodies. And I really feel like taking sugar away, even for my daughter, removing sugar, like our body is always speaking to us, but because of the way the scientists are allowed to manipulate the bliss point in these foods, we are silencing our voice. We're silencing yeah. our body. So by removing sugar, my kids can actually now listen to their body and they know when they are hungry. They know when they are full, but it's also, it carries them into adulthood. Right. My daughter has a sketchy friend or a sketchy boss. She can trust her, her gut her, to yeah. say, hey, this because she's been trusting it her yeah, whole because, life. Because what, what was their gut saying before? Yeah. There was such mixed messages. And I love what, what you're saying because, you know, just like when you're trying to build muscle in any area of your life, there's gonna be some pain behind that, yeah. you know, as you're trying something different. And if you think that building the, the muscles of momhood isn't going to hurt, <laughs> I mean, you, then you're, you're in for a real surprise because, yeah. you know, going back to the table and saying like, no matter what, even if it's embarrassing, we're going back at it. It's so much easier to just hand a bag oh, of yeah. something to, to a kid. That, that, that takes way less parenting way less. Yeah. than to say, no, we are going to continue redirecting, redirecting. and redirecting yeah. until, you know, and, and you're going to know I'm here for you. You may be mad at me yeah. right now, but yeah. I am here for you. And so that was the thing, like, and I feel like it built something in me, a level of patience. Um, and it's like, 
I love this little boy so much. Yeah. So when I saw him sitting there getting so frustrated and not being able to use his words to communicate, um, because you have to remember when we started him, he was nonverbal. So he couldn't say to me, I don't like this or I don't want this or could, could you put more of this and then I'll eat it. He couldn't say that. So um, this level of love and patience developed in me for him because I just, I wanted to see him do better. So um, it was, and I had, to, there was so much prayer, but God, like, I know that love is patient. So it yeah. was like, while I'm sitting there with him at the table, my husband would be like, I don't know how you do this. He's screaming, he's crying, he's doing all that. I don't know how you do this. I was like, I just, I love him. I'm loving him through it. You almost um, have a list next to you. It's not keeping a record of yeah, wrongs. Yeah, it's not, yeah. you know. And literally, I would just have to go over that with him. Like, I'm I'm here for you. And so when he would get angry or upset, and at the time, he wouldn't really let me touch him or hug him. So it also broke my heart that I couldn't do that for him as a mom. But I just think it would have been so much easier to just, it would have been oh, easier yeah. to put the pants on and go get the goldfish. Absolutely. But I say now, when we're teaching people this, like I prioritize my children's health over my personal convenience. Oh, that's and, good. And you know, when I look back on it, like I don't, it, it's when they're adults, you know, I have my mom, you know, I'm an, her adult child. She's constantly sacrificing Still. her convenience to put me first, whether it be with my health or just, you know, here, I'm here this weekend. She's like, I want to be with the kids while I'm here. And it's like, she could have been enjoying her week off, but she sacrificed her convenience to put me first. And I feel like as parents, sometimes when we don't have a level of self-love, even for That's ourselves, right. it's really hard for us to do that. So I'm asking you to put this child's health first above your own personal convenience, but you don't have a level of self-love. So I think it was really important that my journey came first That's and so that good. I had that revelation of, I really can only love someone at my level of self-love. And so had I not been able to set parameters and boundaries for myself, I wouldn't have been able to do it for my son. Well, and when you're healthy and you've got the best, you're, you're, you've got the best equipment to go into this battle, right? Yeah. You want to be clear of mind and you want to have the energy and the stamina that you need to go into it. So you yeah. being healthy is amazing. And I'm so excited for your son, but I'm also excited for your daughter because she is going to go into her teen years. And I think about how would it be different as you are you know, developing into womanhood with you know different hormones going on, all of that kind of stuff, to have this in yeah. your toolbox as a young lady yeah. is just what a blessing, right? Yeah, I mean just she's and Penelope is amazing. She's absolutely amazing. Um, and just the level of like her intelligence, her her ability to reason mm -hmm. is just like beyond anything that I've ever seen. Like right. I've never seen a twelve year old without sugar. So for me it's just like, geez. Yeah. God, I made all these mistakes in my life and here she is like, you know, this happened and this happened. And she's like logically thinking through it and I'm just like, how are you able to do this? So, you know, and we're, she's my daughter, so I'm going to be there for her no matter what. I tell yeah. her, you commit a crime, call me first so I can get an alibi right. for you. But I'm like, just to know that as a mom, it feels so awesome to know that because of a decision that I made, right. I have set her up and put her in this position where she's not going to have to deal with the same things that I did. Like her yeah. level of self-awareness and like, hey, you're not the right friend group for me. Like I've seen her be able to navigate those situations where most kids her age are not able to. Because she's clear of mind She's clear too. of mind, yeah. And she's, I've taught her to literally listen to her body. So when she says, mom, you know, this person wants to be friends with, I don't really get a good feeling about it. I support you. I trust you in that because I've taught you with something that seems so simple and being able to tell whether or not you're hungry, you can now trust when your body is speaking. Right. And I'm like, that's, this is something that we are not seeing in this generation that we see right. now that are like, well, I'm gonna just go with what everybody else is going with. Right. You know, I'm, they're all going this way, so I'm gonna go that way. No, and what is this emotion? Am I really angry right now? Or is this like I'm in the middle of a crash yeah. from carbs or yeah. if, I, or if I'm, I'm hangry? Yeah, and right. she knows that. Like she will, if we're on vacation or whatever, we might be on vacation for a week. And when we first started, we would, like I've done every holiday holiday we, for the first two years this is our first year of letting them have a little bit more freedom I guess um, we would do you know every holiday birthdays everything was keto friendly like we had full Thanksgivings fourth of July anything she could come up with I would find a way to make it keto friendly um, and they were completely fine with that and I felt like we needed to do that to make sure the sugar addiction was broken yeah. mm -hmm. and to show them that it was possible but now like if we go on vacation I'll say okay you can have this you know eat as much fruit as you want um, you, you, can, you can have as much as you want whenever you want or you can pick one day where you can just have 
you know, a snow cone and ice cream and a pretzel. Mm -hmm. um, and when we first started, she would pick to have as much fruit as she wanted. And so I'm like, okay, that's cool. Now she'll pick, okay, I'm gonna have the day where I can have whatever I want. But it's like, by the middle of the day, she's like, mom. I'm done. I'm yeah, done. she's like, I feel horrible. I she's like, like do you see my face? Her face is puffy. Um, you know, she's got a rash on her back. And I'm like, it, you know, this is your choice. And so people were like, well, if it's her choice this day, then why doesn't she get to choose this day? And I'm like, that's parenting. Like, that's you right. know, if my kid decides I'm not going to school today, you don't get to decide that. That's you know, right. there might be a day where mom's like, hey, we're all taking a mental health day today. Mom didn't feel like driving you to school, yeah. so we're gonna stay home. Right. I'm like, but she is a child. And I am responsible That's for right. the choices even that she makes. So this is a choice that you get to have. You can either continue to eat this way, or if you decide to have Oreos and ice cream, you can do that. And so she gets to see, she's like, mom, God, I don't, she's like, these carbs are killing me. And um, she literally knows. She and so knows. she gets to feel what it actually, what these things actually feel what like. What is the pain? Yeah, what and it, she says the source. She said, I don't know how my friends make it through school. Here's your daughter when who you can knows. really know she, when, what's She's different. given the choice, she's choosing the healthier one. Yeah. It's, you're not even telling her. She's just yeah. like, that's what makes me feel because good. Because I know what I want. this every time. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing your story. Thanks I so know it could be me. difficult. And we're gonna be praying for you. Thank you so much. And it's just an incredible story. Where can everybody find you? When can they find you? Do you have a schedule? So I don't, I need to, but ours is such like, it's we're our life there. We, we tell people we are consistently inconsistent. You know? <laughs> yeah, so that's what you can kind of can expect from me. So we are on uh, TikTok, House of Keto. We are on Instagram, house.of.keto. Facebook, House of Keto. Our website is www.thehouseofketo.com. And we are on YouTube, House of Keto as well, but we don't have a lot of videos All there. the links will be down below. Make sure you go follow her. Do you have recipes on your website? Um, yeah, so we have recipes on our website, but you can literally find us any night of the week um, on our Instagram. So we cook live on our Instagram, but then the video also goes up on our page. So you can go back and see. Anytime oh, I'm awesome. if I'm cooking, I'm going live. So I don't cook without going live. I'm excited. <laughs> that is for you. bravery. Yeah, I know. I'm We're gonna do this, Joe. We can do kids. it. Thank I mean, you so much. It's, it's what an incredible story. And you know what? Again, maybe it has nothing to do with his diet. But we're sure. here right now in Kentucky, and that room over there is filled with people with stories of A1C is going from 13 to 5, and and people literally going from having to have glaucoma surgery to never needing a contact again. Yeah. And the only common denominator is keto. Is the diet. Yeah. So definitely you want to check her out because if you're trying to make the transition for your own family, don't do it alone. That's you don't right. have to do it alone. House of Keto yeah. is there for you also yeah. as a resource, a powerful one. Thank you so much. Well guys, thank you very much for watching. Now if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other videos that we're gonna link right over here. Also make sure you take a look at our most recent video which we're gonna put right over there. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.